I'm the Grumpy Old Man. Thanks for joining me for this video. Now, it was a bit of a big day in US history, of course, in the USA. We had Joe Biden who finally came out of hiding and decided to address the nation regarding his uh, decision not to run for re-election as president. Now, he was supposed to um, continue on because literally a week ago he was saying he was not going to pull out and uh, all of a sudden he decided he did. And that was a bit, bit of a surprise to a lot of people even though, you know, a lot of other people were saying he, he uh, was going to pull out. I didn't think it was going to happen so quickly. I thought he might you know, last a little bit longer. But anyway, so you can pretty much guess how well that went. Now, I'm not even sure if it was a live uh, broadcast or it was pre-recorded. You know, Biden's going to Biden. So let's have a look at um, oh, two or three clips from some of the highlights. Honestly, don't know if you'll call them highlights, but three clips I have and um, how he addressed the nation. So let's head, head over to X and... You know, when I came to office... Here he is. The conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably, would inevitably pass the United, surpass the United States. That's not the case anymore. And I'm going to keep working to end the war in Gaza, bring home all the hostages, and bring peace and security to the Middle East and end this war. We're also working around the clock to bring home Americans being unjustly detained all around the world. You know, we've come so far since my inauguration. On that day, I told you, as I stood in that winter, we were stood in a winter of peril and a winter of possibilities. Peril and possibilities. <laughs> I have no idea what that was. Let me try and uh, repeat that. We're standing in a winter of peril and winter possibilities. A peril possibilities. <laughs> oh, where's the translator when you need one? I found this um, speech a bit weird, actually, this presentation, because he he basically told the nation he, he was quitting, but he didn't say why he quit, really, uh, other than the fact that he wants to pass the torch on to a younger generation. He didn't talk about his health, and he just, yeah, the whole thing was just... A, bit nuts in my opinion but a big thing I noticed is he thanked Kamala Harris or Kamala Harris but he didn't actually endorse her now I'm not sure if there was a reason why he didn't endorse her or because he had already endorsed her in that X, um, X release that he did by surprise to um, the nation at, what was it a day ago two days ago whatever it was now two days ago I think and apparently his staff didn't find out until they actually saw that tweet live on X. I keep calling it tweet. It's actually Xing. That sounds a bit naughty, Xing. So let's have a look at another clip. But um, yeah, it's just it was really weird. Anyway, let's check out the next one. Ben Franklin was asked as he emerged from the the, the, the convention going on whether the founders have given America a monarchy republic. Franklin's response was, a republic, if you can keep it. It was that type of energy right through. It was very, very soft. He, he did his whispering that he normally does as well. Uh, it was more of a, it just felt like more of a campaign uh, speech than it was actually him saying goodbye to the nation. It was just strange. A lot of people were saying it was a coup that was happening in the background because right up to the morning of his uh, resignation, because he uh, resigned, well, I keep on saying resignation, he's actually not, he didn't resign, he's just not uh, running f uh, for the nomination to rerun for the presidency. I hope you're following me. Um, so, yeah, that morning, uh, a, a whole bunch of his staff were actually still saying, his proxies were going out there saying, oh, look, you know, he's definitely 100% in, he's still going to run for the nomination and uh, he's not going to, you know, sway. And that afternoon, we uh, that X was released, that X post where he was saying, goodbye, thank you very much, I'm not running for uh, re-election anymore um, and he endorses uh, Kamala. So, yeah, the whole thing's just really weird. Uh, 
Yeah, I think there has been a lot of shenanigans happening in the background. I guarantee they forced him out. And one of the big things that's happened since then is um, they've, they've gotten like $100 million in donations just in one day, in 24 hours. So that was a lot of money that just appeared. Anyway, let's check out the next video. The cause of American democracy itself must unite to protect it. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future all merited a second term. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. I just find it really weird that he talks about, you know, saving democracy when this whole process wasn't democratic at all. Usually we go through a primary process, or rather they go through a primary process, where Joe Blow, <laughs> excuse the pun, Joe Blow gets to vote who they want to run for the president. And they'll have, um, you know, up to 120 uh, different people trying to run and they slowly get whittled away during the nomination process at, uh, through all the states. And then they end up at debates and then uh, they end up with the final nomination uh, of um, uh, the candidate who's running as well as the VP. This time around, none of that happened. They just skipped it. And I've got, you know, I get the feeling that they held off as long as they possibly could until, you know, the last minute to the point where they just couldn't do anything else other than swap them out. And when you get to that type of situation, there's no demo democratic process left, is there? All of a sudden, you get, you, you get what you, what's allocated. It's, yeah, the whole thing just stinks of corruption. And of course, Kamala uh, um, has taken over and she's received uh, enough delegate um, support that she's the um, she's going to be the nominee, which doesn't actually the official nomination doesn't happen till next month. I think it's three weeks away, two or three weeks away. Yet you know they've pretty much anointed her already for the position, and of course all the left are coming out and um, they they're trying to scrub her uh, history and they're saying things like uh, that she wasn't the czar yet. When she uh, got her position, they actually appointed her as the border czar. And basically her um, duties were to sort out the border crisis that was happening. And effectively, she did nothing uh, because it got worse. And now they're trying to come back and retrocon all those, um, those type of rhetoric, the narrative, that she wasn't the czar. Yet so many, so many different um, uh, media centres... That, and you know said that it was her responsibility and now because she's running for president you know they're trying to clean that slate now in 2019 um there's this um government uh, site well it's not actually a government site i don't think so i think it's a third party and they call it govtrack and what Gov govtrack does it uh, looks at what all the senators are doing um who they're voting for what, what parties they're from and basically how many times they vote for a certain bill, uh, who they support most. Like, for instance, um, let's use AOC. She might uh, vote for Biden, but how many times does she actually vote for his recommendations or there'll be another senator and how much they support each other, that type of thing. In 2019, uh, GovTrack did a, a bit of a survey and, and they worked out who's the most progressive who is the biggest leftist um, uh, senator on the left, and turns out to be uh, Kamala Harris. <laughs> she was the most le uh, left-leaning senator. I think it was over like 100, 100 different senators that they, um, I don't know if they polled, just just did some research. But yeah, and on the GovTrack site, they've actually deleted this poll. I'm calling it a poll because I don't know what else to call it. This study. I'll call it a study. And yeah, and they've, they've deleted the page. Luckily, the internet's forever. So 
Um, this has uh, been going around a bit to make sure everyone is still aware that, you know, how progressive Kamala Harris is. Now, to show you how progressive um, she is, let's um, have a look at some of her best quotes. Remember Venn diagrams, those three circles, right? And then let's just see where they overlap. You will not be surprised because I have constructed a Venn diagram on this. Remember those three circles, how they overlap? I love Venn diagrams, so... <laughs> I just do. Whenever you're dealing with conflict, pull out a Venn diagram, right? And so, you know, the three circles. The television coverage of just yesterday, that's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet based on what we've just been able to see. And because we've seen it or not doesn't mean it hasn't happened, but just limited to what we have seen. For us at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been, you know? Six former you know? administration officials last week wrote that open letter urging the administration to change course, to change strategy. Is it time? It is time for us to do what we have been doing and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree. Our Supreme Court is on the line. Our basic freedoms are being tested. Madam, VP, I know you've been traveling across the country. What are you hearing? Yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. And let me tell you, you're right, Taraji. There is so much at stake in this moment. The majority of us believe in freedom and equality. But these extremists, as they say, they're not like us. No, they not. Oh, God. God, make no mistake, she is definitely DEI higher. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, or equality, inclusion, something like that. Um, when Biden put his, uh, his administration together, he literally said in a, a release um, press conference that it is the most diverse uh, administration that's ever been put together. He literally quoted DEI and then said he, he had hired the first black VP. That was on the agenda always. Had nothing to do with how uh, good you were at your job. It was all about DEI. And you can see the results. She's just awful at her job. She was so bad that when she ran in the primaries that she had to pull out because she had no support. Nobody voted her. She... Well, I wouldn't say nobody, actually 844 people voted for her, which is an absolute disaster. And she had to pull out before they even got to Iowa, which is one of the first uh, major primaries. And on top of that, she had actually accumulated the most uh, donations out of everyone that was running at that time. The most money, and still no one voted her because she was disliked so much. Of course, now it's a complete flip. Uh, all the left media jumping in there, you know, the usual um, MSM uh, rubbish, you know, mainstream media rubbish, and she's amazing, she's wonderful. Um, it's just, it just never ends. So expect a lot more of that, a lot more gaslighting. Uh, the great news is, like I said, the internet is forever. We have a lot of clips of her saying some crazy, you know, some crazy stuff. Anyway, thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, hit the subscribe button if, uh, if you like the video, the like button and share the video. I'll catch you in the next one.